Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at a subset of mass transfer known as permeation. Now to talk about permeation, let's first come up with an example where it might be useful. So let's say that we have a flask in which we want to hold some gas. And to make it airtight, we put a rubber seal on the top of that flask. Let's give this some dimensions. So our rubber seal is going to have a diameter of three centimeters and a thickness of three millimeters. This flask is gonna be made of nickel and the total area of that nickel is going to be 0 0.1 meters squared and it's gonna have a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. The gas we're going to be holding is hydrogen and it's going to be held at a pressure of 3 bar and 25 degrees Celsius and the total volume here is 3 liters. On to the question that permeation can answer for us. How long will it take to lose 1% of the hydrogen in our flask? Now our first thought might be to an imperfect seal here for the rubber. And so there are some holes or maybe some gaps that allow the hydrogen to leave. But let's take that out of the question and say that we have a perfect seal. There are no holes, no leaks whatsoever. Permeation says that we can actually have gas that moves directly through the solid based on just the diffusion of molecules. To think of this, let's first use heat conduction as an analogy. Heat conduction says that the flow of heat is going to be equal to some thermal conductivity divided by the thickness multiplied by the area and also multiplied by the change in temperature over our thickness. We can use this exact same form to explain what's happening with our hydrogen here. So for permeation, we see a flow not of heat, but of molecules. So our molar flow rate is going to be equal to a diffusion constant divided by the thickness multiplied by area. And instead of temperature, we're going to be multiplying by a change in concentration. So this n dot is going to be measured in kilomoles per second. Our d here is just a generic diffusion constant. And so it's going to be meters squared per second, just like our thermal diffusivity and kinematic viscosity. And then this molar concentration is in kilomoles per meter cubed. Now for heat conduction, we would know that the temperature on the inside of our flask here is going to be exactly the same as the temperature on the surface of our solid. Unfortunately, that's not true for our molar concentration. So just because the concentration of hydrogen right above the surface is going to be some value that's not going to be the same as what it is inside the solid. Since we care about the molecular concentration in the solid, we need to turn to another constant. And we can actually find that the concentration inside the solid is going to be equal to some constant, which is the solubility multiplied by the partial pressure of hydrogen, which since we only have hydrogen in the flask, the partial pressure is just the same as the pressure. So this new constant is the solubility, and it has units of kilomoles per meters cubed bar, which makes sense since if we multiply this S by our pressure in bar, then we'll end up with kilomoles per meters cubed, which was our concentration. So this allows us to find the concentration of our hydrogen gas in this solid immediately adjacent to the gas itself. Now, if we go ahead and use this with our equation that we've already come up with, we can actually split up this concentration into the solubility and the pressure. And we'll end up with our n dot being equal to the d multiplied by our solubility divided by length times area times our change in partial pressure. Now this D times S is useful enough that we've given it a name. And that name is the permeability. 
We're still going to use a P for this, but I'm going to use a bold P just to differentiate it from our partial pressure. So this equation here is going to be the equation that is most useful for us to find the amount of gas that is leaving through our two solid surfaces. To move forward, what we need to do is we need to actually find the permeability both for the hydrogen and nickel and the hydrogen and rubber. Now, it bears mentioning that these constants are specific not to a single material, like the thermal conductivity is, but to both materials. The diffusion constant is not just for hydrogen, but it's for hydrogen specifically through nickel. For hydrogen through nickel, the diffusion constant is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12 meters squared per second. And the solubility of hydrogen in nickel is going to be 0 0.00901 kilomoles per meters cubed bar. And if we take these two values together, we can find the permeability of hydrogen through nickel. And that will be 1.08 times 10 to the negative 14 kilomoles per meter second bar. Now, we don't have the individual values for rubber. We just have the total permeability. The permeability for hydrogen through rubber is going to be equal to 1.53 times 10 to the negative 12 kilomoles per meter second bar. Now, these numbers may seem really small to you, but keep in mind that we are talking about mass flow rates of a gas directly through a solid surface. So naturally, those values are very small, to the point that in our day-to-day -day lives, we can usually just think of them as zero and think of a sealed object as being truly sealed. But small is not non-existent, and it's not crazy to ask this question of how long will it take to lose 1% of our hydrogen. So let's go ahead and plug in these values. And if we do so, our molar flow rate through the nickel will be the permeability of hydrogen through nickel divided by the thickness of our nickel, multiplied by that surface area that we're flowing through, and then finally multiplied by the change in partial pressure. And if we assume that the outside of our flask is going to be made of air, then we can just say that this partial pressure on the outside is equal to zero. So plugging these four other values in, we end up with a molar flow rate of hydrogen through the nickel, which is equal to 2.16 times 10 to the negative 12 kilomoles per second. So now let's do the same thing for rubber. Now we haven't calculated the area of this rubber seal yet, but we can find it very easily just from pi d squared over four. And so that area ends up being 0 0.00071 meters squared. Plugging those values in, we end up with a molar flow rate of 1.09 times 10 to the negative 12 kilomoles per second. So our total molar flow rate is just going to be the sum of those two values, which turns out to be 3.25 times 10 to the negative 12 kilomoles per second. To actually answer our original question, we need to use this along with the total number of kilomoles in our flask to begin with. So to do that, we're going to use the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law says that our pressure multiplied by volume is going to be equal to the number of moles multiplied by universal gas constant multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin. So our pressure is 3 bar, but we need that in pascals. So this is going to be 3 times 10 to the fifth pascals multiplied by the volume here, which we said was three liters, but we want that in meters cubed. So that's going to be 0 0.003 meters cubed. That's going to be equal to our unknown number of moles multiplied by 8,314 joules per kilomole Kelvin. Finally, multiplied by our temperature in Kelvin, which is 298. So we can solve that for the number of moles, which turns out to be 3.63 times 10 to the negative 4 kilomoles kilomoles. So in order to find the amount of time that it takes to lose 1% of our hydrogen, 
we simply take 1% of our number of moles here and divide that by the molar flow rate out of the flask. Doing this, we end up with 1.12 times 10 to the sixth seconds. However, this is a very inconvenient unit of time. So instead, we'll say that the time to lose 1% is 12.93 days. Now, I will point out that we are slightly overestimating the flow rate. And so our time here is gonna be a little bit longer. In order to do this properly, we'd really want to go ahead and solve the differential equation, but I'm skipping that part for now. The important things to note here are the similarities of our permeation equation to our heat conduction equation from before. The major change, of course, is what we're actually solving for, the diffusivity constant that we're using, and the actual variable that is changing through the surface. Now, at some points, it may be useful to think of this in terms of mass flow rate rather than molar flow rate. And in that case, we can use the same equation. We simply multiply both sides by the molar mass. And if we do that, we end up with an n dot on the left-hand side, since we're simply taking our kilomoles per second, multiplied by kilogram per kilomoles, and ending up with kilograms per second. On the left-hand side, nothing in these first three terms changes, and so we simply end up with d over l multiplied by area, but then we can take that molar mass and multiply by the concentration. And so our value here becomes a delta rho. So I hope you found this useful, and I hope this acts as a really good first step into understanding the concepts and application of this permeation.